So this is called uh, Slaying Einstein's Holy Cow. And there, there are quite a few articles in science journals saying Einstein wrong. Let's look at one in a popular science magazine, New Scientist. This is the article, Sacrificing Einstein. Our hopes of finding an ultimate theory depend on upsetting a balance that Einstein cherished, says Stuart Clark. Coincidence is not generally something scientists have much truck with. If two things are genuinely unrelated, there is little further of interest to be said. If the coincidence keeps turning up, however, there must be some deeper underlying link. Then it is the job of science to tease out what it is and to explain why there was no coincidence in the first place. Um, what he's going to be talking about is the equivalence principle. According to Wikipedia, in the theory of general relativity, the equivalence principle is the equivalence of gravitational and inertial mass and Einstein's observation that the gravitational force as experienced locally while standing on a massive body such as the Earth is the same as the pseudo force experienced by an observer in a non-inertial accelerated frame of reference. And of course he's uh, going to represent that gravitational force as sort of a distortion space-time geometry. So the article carries on. That makes it rather odd that a large chunk of modern physics is precariously balanced on a whopping uh, coincidence. The coincidence is essential to the way we view and define mass. It is so fundamental to the world's workings that most of us encounter its consequences every day without giving them another thought. Yet, it has vexed some of the best minds in physics for centuries. Galileo and Newton grappled with it and ended up just accepting it rather than understanding it. Einstein went one better. He declared it a principle of nature. He went on to use this equivalence principle as the fundament of the general theory of relativity still our best stab at explaining the mysterious force of gravity but there is a problem if we want to find some bigger better theory that can unify gravity with the other forces that dictate the world's workings the equivalence principle cannot stay we must either unmask this coincidence or radically we think how physics can progress from here. So I, i.e. there's a problem with general, general relativity. There are several versions of the equivalence principle but all boil down to one idea that the effects of gravitational fields are indistinguishable from the effects of accelerated motion. A thought experiment of Einstein's expresses it best. Imagine a person in standing inside an elevator on Earth. What keeps their feet firmly planted on the floor? Question mark. The, in in oh, the inexorable pull of gravity downward, of course. Now imagine the same person in the same lift, but an empty space far from any gravitating object. In this case, a rocket just so happens to be pushing the lift up empty space with the same acceleration that Earth's gravity produces. The passengers will remain squarely on the lift floor in exactly the same way. And he refers you to in the diagram, which I'm now going to show. 
and this is the diagram the picture and I don't like this picture we've got a rocket uh, with a person in it experience and acceleration and we've got a person standing on the earth's surface experiencing gravity the forces acting on the rocket as it accelerates are all parallel as I've shown in this diagram with my pointed arrows uh, while the force acting on the man on earth are not parallel and are all directed at converging on the center of the earth so I'm showing the man's on the surface of the earth and the force of gravity is all pointing towards the center of the earth in this simplified picture and so those uh, forces are not parallel they're converging to a point and the way the picture is set up in the magazine it's not emphasizing this point that the rocket has the forces is parallel but the man on the earth has the forces converging to a point but to consider uh, the forces on the earth being parallel as the as same as the rocket that's an approximation so bearing in mind that approximation and can then get the following maths and i'm not going to go through it you've got the force and those equations The article carries on standing inside an elevator on earth what keeps their feet firmly planted on the floor question mark the inexorable pull of gravity downwards of course now imagine the same person in the same lift but an empty space far from any gravitating object in this case a rocket just so happens to be pushing the lift up empty space with the same acceleration that earth's gravity produces the passenger will remain squarely on the lift floor in exactly the same way. How so when there is no gravity involved? Question mark. In this case, it is the person's inertia that is preventing them floating upward. Inertia is the natural resistance of any body to acceleration. The same effect that pushes you back into your car seat when the driver puts their foot down on the accelerator. The two elevator situations have a common property, mass. But the two masses come from very different places. One gravitational mass is something that responds to the pull of gravity tending to accelerate a body in a gravitational field the other inertial mass is the property of a body that opposes any acceleration another way of stating the equivalence principle is to say that these two masses are always numerically exactly the same the consequences of this coincidence are profound if the two masses weren't the same objects of different masses could fall to earth at different rates rather than all accelerate in the same way in a gravitational field and I say they're probably not exactly the same in some sense so it carries on and it's profound if the two masses weren't the same objects of different masses could fall to earth at different rates rather than all accelerate in the same way in a gravitational field this university of free fall was apocryphally first tested by Galileo dropping a bag of feathers and a bag of lead shot from the Lini Tower of Pisa and Galileo in fact probably never did that experiment it's just a thought experiment 
In fact, the equality of gravitational and inertial mass dictates all gravitational motion throughout the universe. If gravitational mass responded just a little more to gravity than inertial mass does to acceleration, for example, then planets would orbit their stars and stars orbit their galaxies just a little bit faster than they do. Yet there is no obvious reason why this correspondence should be so. It was only by assuming it was that Einstein fully developed the strange contortions and contractions of time and space he, he had first introduced in his special theory of relativity in 1905. And I've I've pointed out in many of my videos how things have got messed up in special relativity. It carries on. What if a massive body such as a planet, Einstein wondered, squeezed the surrounding space into successfully more compact volumes the closer you get to it? Question mark. As something moved toward the Earth's surface, the planet's surface, it would then take less and less time to cross these compacted spaces. It would appear to accelerate. And so now we've got the odd force. By 1916, his thought had, this thought had guided Einstein to this general theory of relativity. What looks like gravity is just uniform motion through a progressively compacted space. And my comment on that is, as I've pointed out earlier, it is not uniform motion. Treating it as uniform motion is an approximation, and there's no mention here of being aware that it is an approximation. So what it does is it carries on, and it says, and if there's no gravity, gravitational mass is fictitious too. And I don't like the term fictitious. It can give completely the wrong impression. To call something fictitious can give the impression it does not exist. When that is not the case, gravitational mass is something that exists to be measured. Language is just being messed up a lot at the time in physics terminology. But if you carry on with that sentence, from, from saying, and if there is no gravity, gravitational mass is fictitious too, it carries on. The only mass at work in the universe is the one that gives a body its inertia. And it then says the coincidence between equivalents disappears. Uh, so what might be meant by the use of the word fictitious is there's no need to think of gravitational mass being different from inertial mass. And there's only just one type of mass. It carries on. General relativity is, as far as we have tested it, periodically accurate, predicting the positions of celestial bodies and guiding our satellites with minute precision. And I'm out in the relevant words as are as far as we have tested, because there are many things not tested, such as the idea that singularity forms in the centre of a black hole, that has not been tested. There is something odd about it that physicists don't like. And my comment is, it's probably things like the idea that there's a singularity at the centre of black holes. That's probably one of the ideas they don't like. It carries on. All the other forces of nature are transmitted between bodies by physical, if etherical, quantum particles. And I'm noting there, well, many physicists say there's no ether, and now suddenly it wants to use that term. And of course, in my point of view, the ether does exist really. In a sense where the mathematics can be interpreted as as it is existing. And 
now the article carries on the electromagnetic force for example is tra transmitted between bodies with the electrical charge by the exchange of the massless particles called photons and I don't like photons being called massless particles uh, because since light is bent by gravity that means it falls under gravity and by Newtonian physics if a body falls under gravity then it has mass so this idea of talking about massless particles I think is in conflict with Newtonian physics a massless particle would not have a gravity effect on it the article carries on the electromagnetic force for example is transmitted between bodies with electrical charge by the exchange of the massless particles called photons outwardly gravity works in exactly the same way it looks it looks like a duck swims like a duck but it can't quite be made to crack like a duck attempts to make gravity crack with a quantum voice are the guiding thought behind string theory and other projects to construct all embracing theories of everything so I think using the phrase quacks like a duck and so forth that's muddies things a bit but on the idea of uh, string theory that's an attempt to unify the forces and in my view attempts to unify gravity and electromagnetism were messed up from the very beginning in the first few steps of special relativity anyway the article carries on but if gravity is to be born as a real force it needs something to latch on to just as electromagnetism latches on to electric charge it needs a gravitational mass that is separate and distinct from inertial mass that means progress to our theory of everything meaning combining uh, gravity with the other forces has an essential first step slaying Einstein's holy cow and that's why I get the title for this video slaying Einstein's holy cow that means Einstein's relativity is wrong and from my point of view it is messed up so repeating what's said that means progress towards the theory of everything has an essential first step slaying Einstein's holy cow and it then says any theory of quantum gravity must violate the equivalence principle at some level and this person Ben is saying that who's a theoretical physicist which means if the equivalence principle of general relativity is wrong and general relativity is wrong as well so we're going to move on the article to a more interesting bit and which says what then one suggestion has its origins in work by Hawking in the 1970s ironically he was motivated back then by a strict application of the equivalence principle Hawking was investigating the properties of black holes the unimaginably dense gravitating bodies whose existence is a central prediction of general relativity and that's where you get in the problem of the singularity again infinite, infinite uh, mass uh, density which doesn't really make sense Hawking suggested that a black hole should be an apparent source of radiation because pairs of quantum particles that constantly pop in pop up in space would become separated close to a black hole so you having radiation around a black hole despite the idea that there is no radiation in a black hole when you take into effect quantum theory then there has to be he carries on with one being sucked in and the other spat out what he means with one particle being sucked sucked into the black hole 
and the other one spat out. You've got the word sucked, which is not really accurate enough. What you means uh, you can have two particles spontaneously pop into existence and one will go into the black hole and one will escape from the black hole. And that's causing, uh, uh, due to uncertainty, it needs to be gone into a bit more explanation, but we'll leave it for that for now. And that led the Canadian physicist Unruh and others to suggest that if gravitation and acceleration really are one and the same thing, similar emissions should be a feature of any body accelerating in a vacuum. By body means object. And it continues. Like Hawking's radiation, Unruh's radiation has never been unambiguously detected. The accelerations necessary to achieve a measurable effect in a lab are generally too high. Although some argue that the effect has been seen with electrons accelerated in the high magnetic fields of particle accelerators. A decade or so on from Unruh's original work, astrophysicist Hayesh of the Max Planck Institute for Extraterrestrial Physics uh, and engineer Alfonso Ruda, Ruda of California State University were playing with a similar idea when they realized the vacuum's interaction with an accelerated body would not just occur on its surface, but permeate its entire volume. That could produce a force that acts in the opposite direction to the body's movement. They originally likened it to the way in which charged particles moving through a magnetic field experience a force, uh, which is the, the Lorentz force, that affects their motion. In, in this case, there were electromagnetic interactions with the quantum vacuum. It appears to be exactly what they need for inertia. Now, Mike McClockham McCulloch of the University of Plymouth thinks such interactions are also just what you need to break the equivalence principle. One prediction made of UNRUC radiation is that like the rays emitted from a body, a hot body, it comes in a spectrum of many different wavelengths. For very small acceleration, the temperature of the radiation that a body sees from the vacuum is low and dominated by very long wavelength. Make the acceleration very small indeed, and some of these wavelengths become longer than the size of the observable universe, effectively cutting them off in this case, according to calculations McCulloch did in 2007, originally to explain the seemingly anonymous acceleration of the Pioneer spacecraft as they crossed the solar system, the total amount of UNRUC radiation experienced by a body would drop and it would fill less of an opposing force. Its inertia would thus fall, making it easier to move than Newton's standard laws of motion dictate and cutting the connection with gravitational mass. 
and this is a latest video or in 2022 of Mike talking about his theory of quantized inertia and so I will end this talk here yeah thank you